by saying congratulations on this album. I've sat down and had a listen to it, and it is an absolutely amazing album, so congratulations. Thank you. Now, you guys were coming off uh, such great success with what had happened with the band prior to this album. Tell us a little bit about what you guys were hoping to achieve with this album after that success had started to shine through. Um, with this one, I, I had a trilogy planned um, for Moon Lover, Star Mourner, and then now Self, Self Loather. So we kind of had just the basic skeleton of what we wanted to do with this one, which was it's going to be like the heaviest um, of the three. It was going to be the darkest. Um, <clears throat> and we just sort of took that in mind when writing this new one and tried to focus, focus in on that so the tracks are a lot shorter than um, some of the longer drawn out like extravagant tracks on on Star Mourner, let's say. But um, I think the two main differences with this one were just we wrote the whole thing as a full band instead of just me writing as a solo solo artist, and then uh, just my vocal style um, using lyrics for the first time, doing sort of a more traditional black metal mid type vocal, and then kind of a lower death metal type vocal. Um, I think all those sort of work together to bring, you know, kind of a heavier, darker feel for this album compared to the other ones. I was going to ask about it later on, but I'll ask now because you just mentioned it. That transition from solo artist to full band, how did you find that transition? And and what was it like this time around being able to, to write with a full band? Um, I kind of did it slowly. Um, so the first, so Moon Lover, I wrote all myself and I performed the entire thing myself in the studio. And then with Star Mourner, I still wrote everything, but the the band performed their own parts on the record. And so it's kind of like a stepping stone. And then with this one, we all wrote the entire thing together. Um, for me, I think I had, you know, I'd written three full lengths and an EP for Ghost Bass just by myself. And it was time to get some, like, different perspectives, some different voices in there. Um, if I wanted to, like, move forward and not just sound like the same thing over and over. Because, you know, I have my own style and I have my own way of writing. I'm super, I write a little bit more minimalistic, 4-4 uh, four, four time, um, pretty chords going into each other. And then the other guitarists, we have three guitarists. They, they're more into, you know, different rhythms, time signatures. Um, they listen to a lot more death metal, and they, they can they can bring that element to it. And then when I add my stuff, um, it can still sound like Ghost Bath, but it's, it's, it's not just, you know, stagnated or the same thing. I felt like it, it, it helped push us forward, and it allowed us to write, <laughs> write an album that I wouldn't be able to write myself. Yeah, having other people involved as well, that of course opens up um, new perspectives, new things that people have been through in life and things like that. Did you notice the themes changing a little bit as well because you had extra people in the writing process this time? Um, I think we all kind of agreed sort of from the beginning. I mean, not straight away. We, we would throw ideas out there and we would knock some down and, and say, oh, we really like this. And we kind of got exactly what we were going for um, with the first track that we wrote, which was Convince Me to Bleed. That was also the first single we put out. Um, once we had that as sort of a blueprint, okay, we we were kind of all on the, on the same page um, when bringing riffs and all of for this album we actually had like twice as many um songs written for it and then we would kind of cut out the ones that didn't really fit in and surprisingly we we worked together pretty well i mean nobody we didn't really have any arguments about parts or anything you know if somebody felt super strongly that something should be a certain way we just we kind of went with that or you know it just it just depended from from part to part and so i think for me giving up that control was, wasn't as big of a deal as I thought it would be because um, I'm kind of a control freak with it, at least with like the art 
how I want the art to look and the naming of stuff, which I, I still sort of had control on. But I knew that if I wanted to move forward or or change, that I had to, you know, trust trust them. And we've been playing together since we we started playing live in 2016. So, and I've known these guys even longer than that. So I had no problem um, trusting them and their perspective and letting letting their voices come through as well. Yeah. How did you go about capturing that darker and harder sound? Or was that kind of influenced by the world that was around you at that time? Because I know you guys were in what was considered the the, the COVID capital at that time. Did that darker and harsher element was that something that you had to work for or was that kind of affected by what was going on around you? Um, you know, I can only speak for myself. I haven't really talked to the guys in depth about, you know, where their specific um, influence for their parts came from. Um, but for me, it, it's always been sort of an internal thing. Um, the external world didn't affect it as much as you know, you might think, um, I'm, I've always been like a night owl. I'm always, you know, I enjoy my time alone. And so for me, it wasn't too big of a life lifestyle change. Um, and I think I came to sort of a revelation. Maybe, maybe more people will sort of understand that aspect of it than what of previously before, you know, lockdowns or, or being more isolated. Um, than they would have, you know, beforehand when I was, I was still, you know, I had the same sort of dark themes, like all my art sort of exudes that. And, and I think maybe now with, with everything going on, people can maybe connect with it a little bit more, just, uh, more on like the, the level of like isolation and feeling alone. Yeah. With, with the pandemic and with how it affected the town that you were living in, did that kind of hamper how you went about recording this album because i know here in melbourne we're in what's been called the most lockdown city in the world i think we've been in lockdown now for 230 days out of the last year um and it's affected the music scene here massively how did things become affected there for you guys and also in the recording of the album did that cause any problems for you guys um so I've always lived about an eight hour drive away from Minneapolis. And I think the main, we didn't, we didn't have any lockdowns. Like I could travel at any point during the, um, during the pandemic. And I lived in such a small town. People didn't really, really care too much. I think we became the, the highest, um, number of daily cases per capita in the world at one point, just because we had such a small population. Um, the, the main thing, the main effect it had was just drawing out the, the recording process where we would just do it in instance of like two, three days at a time where I would drive eight hours to Minneapolis. I'd stay at our guitarist house. We'd be in the studio, you know, <clears throat> 10, 12 hours a day for three days in a row. And then I'd drive back and you know, being that far away from everyone, we're kind of used to that that way of doing things. You know, if we were going to go on tour, we we wouldn't, like, be all together to rehearse the whole time. I would just come for, like, an intense, you know, few days to, of practice where we'd go through all the songs before the tour. So mainly it was just, you know, drawing things out. Um, the, the George Floyd protests were happening during the recording of this album as well. I mean, there were buildings on fire, you know, a block away from our practice space. And so it was just time, you know, you adapt to things, you, you figure out a way to do it. And, you know, we just wear masks when we went in with our, our uh, engineer, Xander, and we, we just got the album done one part of one part of the time, you know, we would do all the drums in one, intense couple days and then i'd go back home and then let's say you know covid was getting pretty bad i'd wait a couple weeks extra and then okay let's schedule it for this weekend and just just like that but yeah we didn't have any restrictions on traveling it was just more um mask mandates and stuff like that 
Yeah, you you mentioned about the the George Floyd riots happening at the same time while you're recording. How do you focus on your music when there's a building a block away that's on fire? I know that we live in a pretty peaceful city here, so when something like that happens here, it becomes a big thing and everything shuts down. Did that take your attention away from your music at that point? Yeah, um, luckily the weekend that that happened, I wasn't down there. I was, you know, all the way in North Dakota. And so we we just were like, okay, we'll just wait because we didn't know what was going to happen, how bad it was going to get. Um, made sure our, our drummer, who was the one who was renting out the studio, had like insurance on it in case anything happened. All of our equipment was in there. But other than that, um, we just kind of waited it out. Um, there's not really much else we could do. So what's it like there for you guys now? We're still in lockdown here and it looks like we will be for another five weeks at the moment. Are you guys free to go out and, and do shows to promote the album? And, and if so, what's the um, what's the future look like for you guys for the rest of this year and early next year? Um, yeah, we never had any lockdown. Um, now I live in Pennsylvania, so I'm just in a completely different state. I'm on the East Coast. Uh it's a little different from, from North Dakota, but um, mainly right now, where uh, masks are optional. It, it, it seems like it's like opening up a little bit. Um, we've had some bigger like festivals, like Lollapalooza and stuff happen. Those are outdoor festivals. And I've seen some friends of mine who are on tour right now doing actual like clubs and indoor shows. So it seems like it's kind of opening up, but it also seems like COVID starting to get worse again here. And so it's kind of all up in the air and we don't have anything confirmed or booked right now. Um, we did have some in January that got canceled. And right now my, my mindset is just, you know, if we, if we end up on a tour, then it'll be like a pleasant surprise. I'll be happy, but I'm not going to like hope for it or expect it to happen. I, I just kind of expect things to stay the way they are right now. I don't, I don't know where, where they're going to go. So it's, it's at first I was like, okay, we can wait this out, put out the album and then when it's time to tour and then we can tour. And then that just kept, you know, the time period kept getting longer and longer. And then we, we finally decided we're not just going to sit on the album forever. We'll put it out. And if we can tour on it, fine. If not, we'll probably just, you know, start working on another record or something. Yeah. I know North Dakota has also been a big influence on your music over the years the the move the change for you to a different state do you think that'll um affect your music down the track like will we hear a different style almost to a point because of that change um i think just for how long i mean i was in north dakota for for 30 years nearly so i think that'll always be more of an influence than you know i just moved here last month um I think it'll take a while before that really has any effect on, on my writing. But I think, you know, during my formative years, being in such like an isolated area with only, I think we had 30,000 people most of the time. And then it, we had like an oil boom and it grew to like 60,000 in my town. We didn't really get big concerts or bands. So I never had the influence of like arena metal or like, you know, somebody bigger, like, trivium or something would never come through my area so i was always more influenced by the smaller like midwest emo bands that came through like melodic our hardcore was really big where i was um and stuff like that and and i think that that kind of shows in in my writing I, I don't write like a traditional metal track i don't think i think it's it's just coming from a different perspective and i i don't think i can really lose that part of me even if i moved all the way out here definitely now mate, i know we are running out of time very very quickly but before i go i want to ask about the artwork one of the things i've always loved about your albums are the amazing artwork tell us a little bit about the artwork for this album because i'm looking at it right now and it is absolutely sensational yeah it's um it's done by a polish artist beksinski um very famous artist, at least in that area. And, and I think in the metal world, a lot of people know who he is. But he does super surreal, dark, intricate paintings. Um, and he he was murdered, um, so he's no longer um, 
around, but I I always pick a piece of art after the album's finished, and I've never like commissioned a piece for the album specifically. I always find something that's already finished, uh, a finished art piece that's done that really, once everything's said and done, that connects with me and brings me kind of to the same place as the the music does. And so, yeah, for this one, I you know. I was searching, uh, as usually like Google, Instagram, wherever, whatever site I can go to, whatever paint, painters I can think of or photographers. And as soon as I saw it, I, I just knew it was the one. And that's kind of how I go about it. It's just whichever one I can feel like that connection with right when I see it, I know like this is self loather. And so the moment I saw it, I, I had to research how to, how to license it or use it. And, all of his pieces now belong to a museum in Poland. And so I had to email and get all that figured out. And I, I licensed it from the museum at that point. So Awesome. Well, mate, it looks absolutely amazing. And to finish off, is there anything you'd like to say to your Aussie fans out there before they go out and grab this album? Um, I'd love to come play there. <laughs> it's always been a dream of mine. That'd be, that'd be great. Um, Australia has always had some, some good depressive blackmail actually like uh germ and austere if you haven't listened to them yeah. check them out woods of desolation yeah so so yeah it, it would be awesome to come out there i don't know when, if that's a possibility even in the near future but yeah 